Just a minute. So hi, it's me. I'm starting the Young Star program. And it's going to be very uh, enlightening and helpful. And you get to get some of my free uh, training, some free trainings with it. That's especially the one I'm just starting now. It's been working on is the goals. So that's going to be a lot of important information there for you. Goals and habits. Oh, there's someone coming. I got to go and see where they're at. I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, admit. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute and see who it is. Leilana, my favorite person. How are you doing? Oh, you're not. You're not, uh, your sound is off if you're saying anything. Hello, hello, hello. So there you go. I'm excited. Oh, you're muted. But you can just listen if you want to. I don't know if I can unmute you or not. I think you need to unmute. I'm going to go back to sharing. If you have any comments, Leilana, or no, I just started the sharing. Of the post and I gotta find out where it is. That's three. Can you hear me? Oh now I can. Hi. Okay, perfect. Hey, how you doing? Great. Oh, there I am. I had to find which one. Always <laughs> find it on here. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. Oops, I want to. I want to see myself. I look so beautiful, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> So the program, yes, you do. thank you, thank you, <laughs> is getting the points you need for the star level you want. So basically, we're going to start with the two to three star. And then next year, hopefully we can go from three to four or continue if you need more help with that. So me, I'm all about getting you through the program, my knowledge, make sure that you're accountable for your actions get you a good mindset and motivation. And you gotta have the dedication, the mindset, motivation, and your goals. So there you go. And then the, the answer program is basically pro points and improvement plan for that. So there you go. I'm an expert in childcare. You know all about me. I've worked in childcare for over 25 years. I can't believe it's been that long. I think it's more like 28 but they don't always count everything. So there you go. So engaging trainings, I have some great reviews on my trainings. Thank you, thank you, somebody who's here. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> there you go. And then just- And they are all true, they are all true. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, awesome. I know, I can't believe I got three now on Google. And, oh, wow. Mm -hmm, and I got, I got equal now and then three on LinkedIn. Well, actually I got four, but one's from a long time ago. So, but I have three okay. ones on. Yay. Yeah, I know, isn't that? <laughs> I'm excited about it and happy about it. I've never gotten a complaint about my trainings. I only got one that said that uh, they wanted <laughs> the live training instead of the self-study. They should that I should make it into a live training because I prefer that me in live training. Oh wow. It's negative. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, maybe sometime I'll rearrange it as a licensing one. So I gotta update that too because the licensing book that you that's been updated in June for right. And it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Are they that bored? For it was only just for a sentence or two, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what it looked like. And if you look at it, it still says December on there. So I don't know if those are not updated yet. They have to somehow make it into a PDF file. So they're not there yet. Because if right. I mean, I downloaded it and it still says December on there. Oh, wow. So I'm a little confused about that, but I'm waiting to see to update some of my stuff before I go ahead and do that. So the Young Star program is a quality rating and improvement system for Wisconsin. So we give parents the tools and information they need to raise happy, healthy kids and the child care center, as it should say. And we help preschools 
home-based programs, learning centers, and other childcare programs. They also do day camps. Most of them don't do it though, but they could if they wanted to. Nurturing places to go. So how does the youngster do it? By, by being hopefully objective and measuring child quality through all the different sections of the child care young star program, I should say, and giving parents an easy way to compare their local child care to options. So you can do that, you know, search thing. I don't know if you know about the Wisconsin search thing, that you can search the different daycare centers and it tells you their violations, their young star, when they started, ages that they, that they have at their program, and the hours and all the different kinds of things on there so that parents can search that and find the daycare. And they can search by area too, zip code, different things like that as well. And then they can find them and then they can look at and say, oh, how good or not so good certain ones are, depending on what they're looking for. And there's family and group on there too, all the different ones. So there's supporting providers with tools and training to deliver high quality care. So they do have some trainings on there and they do what's called micro grants to help you with trainings and different program needs. So all kinds of different things they do and to help. Not a lot, but they do some. And then they come out, like the licensor comes out, they come out too. And it's, in the beginning they come out a little bit more and then they go to mostly yearly and you can contact them here and there for some support. And the youngster is a wonderful childcare system to help improve childcare for all, which in turn helps our children, our families, our neighborhood, our community, our city, our state, and on and on. It's called what? The ripple effect. That's all me. I thought of that. So of helping children. So, and this is mainly to help the childcare directors and owners. So group and family. And they're fairly similar that way. So are you ready to move forward? Are you ready for the best childcare center you could make? So what points do you have is this one, this first part, what points do you have for Young Star? And that's part of your homework. If you want to get the hours for it, then you have a little bit of homework to do and I'll send you the documents. So what points do you have for Young Star? Do you have the education and, your, and or does your staff have the education? So you need that for child care centers. And do you have the determination? That's you, all the determination that you need. And then we talk about mindset and motivation. We know need those too, because we can't get down in the dumps and then not move forward. Sometimes we do, but we got to make sure. And that's why I'm here to help keep you motivated. I'm going to look on Youngstar, on Youngstar, on Facebook to see what's going on. Oh, it's doing the um, script thing. <laughs> I didn't realize it's doing that. I don't know if it does it automatically or not. So where are you at? So this is part of your homework you got to do. Star level two, you have to have zero to 10 points. Star level three, 11 to 22 points. Star level four, 23 to 32 points. And star level five, 33 to 40 points. Or you can actually get accredited. There's a family one and the NACI one as well. And there's a Madison one, if you're in the Madison area for the accreditation process. And that one, I was told that you can, if you do the accreditation, you can skip all, all the different things. But if you don't and you wanna do it segmented and do it on your own or with a little help with me, you can do, you have to do it every year. You can't, they will not allow you to skip to, to level four or level five. You have to go from two to three, three to four, then four to five that way. So just so you know, so categories is group child care qualifications for the teachers. And then there's group director qualifications, zero to six, and then learning environments and curriculum at zero to 13 points. And business and professional practices are zero to seven. And then health and wellness is zero to five points. Now, you should get 
to do this, if you haven't done it already, and I can help you with this, is to get you started. And this is something we're going to talk about a little bit in the beginning of the first training, if you haven't done this already, is to go through the Young Star booklet. There's a PDF file that you can get and then go through all the different areas and see where you are at for the your educational qualifications, your environment and curriculum, your business and professional, and your health and wellness, and see where you're at. And then you can um, put your points here. If you're not sure, you can kind of look briefly. There's a brief PDF I can send you if you want of the different ones that you need. I think I have them on here. So for education, you need just the basics for level two. Then I have, because I do, yay, me. I read, had it on here. So star level two, you need just the basic qualifications. Like, because star level two is basically that you are approved through licensing, that you do have all the licensing regulations in place. That's what star level two means. Then star level three is registry level 10 or higher. And this is for the director. Star level four, registry level 12 or higher, and then registry level 13 or higher, higher for star level five. So do you, you know, need to work on your lead teachers for that? There is, has here for family, it's just you, unless you do have a lead teacher, some do, or different staff for if they're doing second or third shift. And they have subs, so they can take some time off too. So you have to have different qualifications there. So um, you need seven to 25% for star level three for your teachers, and then it moves up to nine to 50%, and then 12 to 100% to be on the same level as you. So that is that part. Any questions so far, Leilana? Then see the other one here. I'm looking on here and I'm not seeing anyone on here at the moment. No, ma'am, but I'm here. <laughs> okay, well, I can see that you're here. I'm just double checking and looking on the Facebook real quick just to see if anyone's there or not. Okay. So, so the young star sections are once again the education, learning environments, and curriculum. That's the hardest part. And we're going to be doing, I think I have it as three months roughly on that. For the year, I think that's three months. We're just going to do education, I think, one and a half months just to help you get those resources, what classes you need, and get you started on that. And then we're going to move on to the learning environments, which is the portfolios for all the children, your curriculum, and assessment programs, all those kind of things. And that's kind of a lot. So getting that all started is a lot to get started. But once, as most things, once you get it started, you're, you know, you're in pretty good shape. You're getting it. Everyone's done seeing how you want to do it in binders. Usually most do it in binders, but you can do it in notebooks or folders or different ways. You can also do it, I think, electronically, as long as when they get there, they can access it. So you got to watch out for that. And then, of course, it needs to be careful so not anyone can just go and access it and that private information, those kind of things. And then business and professional practices and then health and wellness. And I think we have a couple in each of those months. The big bulk is gonna be the learning environment and curriculum because that's gonna be, that's the main bulk of, I think of everything because it's gonna have room arrangement in there too. It's going to be having developmentally appropriate practices in there, making sure in the Weemals and the Pyramid Program. So you need to have those um, classes too, especially the Weemals because your curriculum and that has to all be based on the Wisconsin Early Learning Model Standards. There, I think I might have did it the wrong way around, but that's what it is. The Wisconsin Early Learning Model Standards. So we're going to be talking about all that in, in there. So that's a lot. That's like, oh, that's a, the bulk of it and the hardest to get to. 
Well, then the education, but that's something that we can, and we're also going to check back every so often. We're going to go back to it every so often to the past sections. So we're not going to just say, oh, you know, go on to this next section and forget about it. We're going to check in and say, hey, how are you doing the education? Are you taking those classes? Did you do your WEMO's classes? Did you, are you got into your classes for at MATC or wherever you need to go for the different credits that you need? and things like that. And we're gonna also talk about what I would recommend and what you wanna do for your credentials to start with, and moving towards then associates or getting two or three credentials to get those, to get your level up there to 12 and 13. So that kind of thing. So the big main thing is, do you have the determination to get there to do it? Now you're just doing out, Leilana, so I know you do. But some people have you been stuck in star level two and you're trying to get there to move forward. Sometimes it's hard. And that's where I come in to help you to make sure that you're moving forward to get those goals. So my goal training I'm gonna do for free for everybody. I'm gonna do a shorter version with the program and then I'm gonna have a full version that you can also do for free to help you to get there, to making sure you're writing those SMART goals and then those daily tasks and all those different things that you need to do to make sure you're getting things done on a regular basis and keep you motivated. So it's the ability to keep, continue to keep trying no matter if you fall down, you mishap or something happens or you just get frustrated. You got to make sure that you can keep going. That's why we're going to have the actual training once a month and then a Q&A session on those Mondays, one Monday a month, Q&A session for the young star. So if you need some help, some motivation, keep you going, things like that. So you'll meet twice a month and they'll both be recorded. And then you can look back at them. And just so to let you know, also with the training to get those educational hours for the training portion you need to be there i can't allow you just to do the recording because you can just go zoom and not listen to it all and you need the time slot so for that you can if you miss it that's okay it happens and you can have the opportunity to watch it later because things do happen throughout the year but for that month i will not be able to give you the actual hours for it so that's kind of how that will work. Unless I can figure out some way where I can make sure that you watch it all that way. So that's part of being a trainer. You gotta make sure that you are accountable for all your training hours with what you do. Okay, I forgot where I was there for a minute. What does it take? Autonomy, self-regulation, empowerment, and self-realization all those things for self. And I can't do those things for you. I can help and encourage you, but it can be a struggle to get there. I like that one. It's like climbing that difficult wall and it seems like it's so far away, but it's not. You can get there, you can do it. Autonomy is the quality of an act or power of making one's own choice or decisions. So basically, you have this determination to get there, to do it. This is what I'm going to do. This is kind of part of the goals, is you have a determination. You can make these goals, and you can move forward with those goals. You have that decision, those choice, that power to do that. So different levels of determination is always going to others to make decisions. So you're not making those decisions on your own. And that's okay in the beginning and sometimes, but we need you to get to relying on yourself and just a few others. I mean, you, you can't always just rely on yourself because everyone needs help. I need help. Everybody needs help with different things throughout. So we need to get to the point where you're not constantly going to others for help and constantly changing your mind. That's another one, changing your mind because, oh, okay, it's not going, it's not going. You know, you need to make sure that you do need to review, you need to do that teaching cycle. You need to 
learn that information, whatever it is, like about the portfolios, what you all need in your curriculum and the WEMOs, so that you need that, then you need to implement it, and then you need to review it. Is it working? Is it not working? Maybe you need to put it in a portfolio in a binder rather than in a folder. It's not working out. Or maybe you need to talk to your staff and why they're not doing it. So you need you need to not constantly change. You got to know and do a review. And if you are changing, everyone does change their mind sometimes because guess what? Not everything's working right or something might not be working right. So you need to change it. And that's okay. Just changing your mind just because, well, it's not working one day and you have that awful mindset. You got to go, no, you got to move forward and try to get there. And then rely on yourself and to make those points. And relying on yourself doesn't mean you can't go to other people to help and get input. Someone that's more knowledgeable or experienced, like coming to me or taking this training or going to someone else or going to young, young star consultants. I just think what they were called, young star consultant and going to get help somewhere so you can make those right decisions. So that's what it's all about. So you got to figure out where you're at do you constantly change your mind for no reason or do you have a reason and you're working towards it and you're reviewing that and doing the kind of the teaching cycle, the evaluation cycle of what you're doing? So where are you and what do you need to work on? So kind of looking at yourself, it's always a self-reflection and learning, which I love is you're living to learn and learning to live. So this is also yourself. You got to know that, yes, I'm not perfect. I still need things to learn and to do. So you got to work on it and be okay with that. Then self-regulation, oops, should be down here. I don't know what happened. Anyway, self-regulation is the process of continuously monitoring progress kind of from, it kind of builds on each other. The process of continuously monitoring progress towards a goal, checking outcomes, having checkpoints. We talk about that in the goal I did in the Facebook Live, but we talk about that in the goal thing is having checkpoints, having writing that overall goal for each area of the young star, and then having checkpoints and daily tasks that go with that so you can see the progress so it's self-motivating that way, as well as giving you direction and seeing where you need to do, and then evaluation. So check, check in on your outcomes on a regular basis. Sometimes with staff meetings, if you're a group, you have to have those staff meetings. That's a great one. And it's help for delegating too. So you can have the staff doing things because they need to be doing the portfolios. You just got to make sure that they're doing them and that they're doing them correctly and making sure they're getting the training that they need so they can do all of that. And then and re redirecting unsuccessful efforts. We talked about that, right? So you have to be self-regulating in all those different things. And always constantly, guess what? Improving yourself. You do this by being organized, record keeping, looking for information and evaluating and reviewing outcomes. So checking on it. And that's a great way to do it. Having those checkpoints once a month or every other month, depending on what it is and saying, okay, am I making it? Am I doing it? Is it working? Am I getting there? And if not, why not? And then reevaluate that and then change it and make it work. So this is a part of winging it. Are you just winging it? Just whatever happens, you're going to try it and see what, and not evaluate or do anything to help it to work. Inconsistent with it. You're getting the kind of similarities here and consistently self-evaluating. So you have that system in place and you are re-evaluating and getting more knowledge if you need it. Different things like that and trying new things and figuring that out. So all those different things. So where are you at and what do you need to work on? And empowerment, promoting skills, knowledge, and the confidence. And that's a hard part to have confidence. You also need that to make sure that you're just not winging it all the time or changing your mind. You have to have the confidence that this is working or this is not working and making enlightened and effective decisions and not just winging it and needed to take control of your life. 
This is done by making outcomes to your benefit and looking at mistakes as a way to learn. So we all make mistakes. We're going to fall down. Part of that is getting back up, right? That's kind of the mindset motivation there too. So outcomes benefit and looking, looking at mistakes as a way to learn. So it's that whole learning process again, right? I'm looking at those outcomes and benefits. and But with this, you need the self-confidence. And hopefully by doing this on an ongoing basis and with me helping and different things like that, you will get that self-confidence and be able to move forward. So feeling not in control. So you have that feeling. Maybe I should have put this one first. The feeling of not in control that nothing you can do and there's always bad things happening and it's not going to work those kind of things going on and we got to make sure that no there's some things yes out of your control but learning to work with it i mean sometimes when you come in you're going to have a bad day you're going to have a day that you're not going to get any or hardly any of your tasks done much less your goals right because you have staff out you have parent complaints you have all these different things going on the food truck didn't come, so you got to rummage and make lunch. So there's all those different things that can take you away from it and does happen. But you got to realize that's an every day. And that's where delegating and working things out, if you can afford to have maybe an extra staff person, or maybe if you can get some parents to volunteer, there's all different ways to help you on your day-to-day -day journey. So you can do better with it. And and realizing that, so then you do have, and realizing you do have some control. So you're starting to get some control and change your outcomes. And then you're getting control in your actions and learning by experience, the whole things, learning from what you've done and reevaluating everything. So again, where are you at? And what do you need to work on? And then the last but not least, self realization. It denotes a state in which an individual knows who they truly are and accepts themselves with all their limitations. And part of this part to me is knowing your limitations and sometimes you need to work with them. You can sometimes change them with getting knowledge and gaining skills and things like that. Sometimes it's kind of hard. Like me, I know that all my friends like I'm trying to pretend that I'm not um, upset or anything. And I'm saying, no, but they, my facial expressions is, you know, <laughs> and that's great for the child care teacher, but sometimes it's like, I can't hide it. So I've learned to, to accept it. And I say, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Or I might, then maybe I need to talk about it. So that's what I do. I love to talk about things. So I talk about it and that's okay. I learned my limitations with my facial expressions because I'm very, everything's on my face. I can't hide it. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't hide it. I've tried. So learning those limitations sometimes that you may have, all those different things. So not sure where, who you are, you know, that's, you know, usually pretty younger, but sometimes you're like, okay, do I really want to do this director job or not? Do I want to do a family child care or not? I don't know where I want, maybe I should have stayed in the classroom, all those kind of also indecisions and things and not of fully accepting yourself and your limitations, you know, and kind of, you know, bringing your head against the, butting your head against the wall, that's it. And keep, keep doing it. And it's like, it's not working. So you're not doing that reevaluation and learning about yourself, right? And then now you're knowing your limitations and working with those limitations and things like that. So that's, it is, I guess what it is again, where are you and what do you need to work on? And they all will probably be very similar answers. So I have one kind of fun question here at the end, your alarm goes off. This helps to tell the kind of person you really are. Your alarm goes off in the morning and you slap the snooze button and continue to sleep. You turn the alarm off and drag yourself out of bed. Ugh. Or you groan, then get up and turn the alarm off and begin to get ready. You leap out of bed and start to sing. Oh, 
I'm not a morning person. That is not me. <laughs> I used to be. I mean, I remember I had to get up sometimes to open and have, you know, all that. Because I was a director, so I got some phone calls in the mornings and I'm calling sick and it's snowing out, the winter here, all those different things. So it's like, oh, so then I have to go in and figure it all out. And I was like, okay, with that, I could do it. So leap out of bed and start singing or stretch and yawn, then flip it off and ignore it for a few minutes. Your pillow covers up, your pillow covers up enough of the sound. <laughs> So you're hiding from it. So there's some obviously some very wrong answers for it. And then there's some that, you know, yeah, sometimes that happens or you know because you got Collins and what you have to do that day. You're like, you know, you don't, you're not looking forward to it. So we, you can't always leap out of bed and start singing every day, I don't think. So I guess there's some people out there that do. I have a Friend of a friend from years ago that seemed to be that way. And just like, is, you know, always happy-go-lucky person. I'm more there, but not really that way. I, you know, plus you don't want to hear me sing. So <laughs> you got that problem too. So the kids always loved it because I always made up songs. They just loved my singing, which, well, and it tells you that they don't know enough about singing or they're very generous with me. So what does this tell you about yourself? So think about it with all that we talked about. And this is part of your homework, so I'm not going to give you any more clues. What it tells you about yourself, just about how you get up in the morning. Now, for me now, even, I don't even have an alarm. I can just get, I usually am up by the time I need to. And usually like an hour or so early. So I'm usually lounging in bed between five and six, doing Facebook or emails or different things and getting my morning email and social media stuff out of the way. Then I got up and go to get up and go. Now my husband, who are exact opposites, I guess it is two opposites to attract because he is like the alarm. Ah, ah, ah. And I think that's why I started to do it my way because I they just drove me nuts. I'm not, I'm not getting any more sleep. The alarm's going off over seven or eight minutes. And I'm laying there and then it goes off because I'm such a light sleeper. So it's like, so I think that's part of the reason that that's kind of was ingrained in me. And then also being a child care director, having to get up those early hours is still in there. So anyways, who, what does this tell you about yourself? And what do you all need to work on to become determined? So kind of an overall kind of thing where you think you need to be. Are you there? Are you not there? You, you know you got some things to work on. Where are you at? And then you can always, guess what? Start over. Start afraid. I did with my new business. I started very afraid. I'm like, ah. So, and sometimes I'm still afraid. So some, I got to get myself motivated sometimes and start again. That's the biggest thing is starting again. Always. Even with making those mistakes and being afraid. Start late. Yep. I started late with this business. I'm on the older edge of 57. Well, actually I'm not the older edge. I'm mid 57 now and start late, but just start. And then of course we want to get from one, two, three, four, five stars. And that is part one. So I'm going to stop sharing. Yay. Hi. So any questions, part one, we're done with. We're going to go on to part two. And I'm going to look on Facebook Live real quick, see if anyone's there. I don't see anyone there. It doesn't look like so. I'm going to get going. How are you doing, Leilani? Are you still there? Yes, ma'am. I'm still here. So do you have any great questions or comments, concerns? Um, No, right now I'm just taking notes. <laughs> oh, all right. Yes, I know you're a note taker. So am I very much. But my notes are terrible. So I have to... There's one, this mindset, Facebook Live, I really like, or mm -hmm. I should say she does a lot of lives. Well, I I go and take notes and I, I rewatch it like a hundred times. <laughs> yeah. <I was laughs> notes like, oh, are wow. very good. I love taking notes because you can oh, always wow. go back. Yes, me too. I always go back. Okay, start sharing again. There we are. Let's see. Where am I at? See, that's part up. 
Start up part two. I think that is right. That's no, that's part two. Part three is there. Okay. I don't know why it's in that order. There we go. Yay. Part two of well, the Young Star program. So we talked about that, how Young Star does it by objectively measuring child and care quality and all those different things. A great program they do have overall. So now we're going to do, do you have the mindset and motivation? And this can lead into the other things being a problem, right? You see that, especially determination. Get in there, the mindset and motivation you need. So is your mindset determined? Attitude, the right disposition, a positive mood? Is it a determined attitude? The right disposition or a positive mood? So, and we just need to make sure we always start, right? Mindset is a fixed mental attitude or disposition that predetermines a person's responses to and interpretations of situations. Mindsets can affect your attitude, disposition, or mood. This can become habit forming, and it does. I think I, I don't know if I mentioned it with you, Leilani, but I know I mentioned different things. And that's because I'm getting help with my mindset and doing much better with it. I remember having such negative, negative thoughts. And it just, it makes you not want to do anything, become lethargic, even depressed. And you just, does, then you're not moving forward. And it's just frustrating. It can be hard. It's like, okay, I can't do this. I can't do this. Well, those uh, brain connectors, I can't remember the term, but can be changed. So you got to start. And I mean, it sounds silly. And I thought it was silly, but I started doing it. I'm like, I need to do something. So I did. And with the, this, not this one I'm watching, but some other ones, it's very true. So if you start saying, I can do this, you know, I know this, I got the knowledge, I got the education that helps. And you can keep saying that over and over in your head. I can do this. Let me reevaluate it sometimes or do different things differently, but you got it. You can do it. I mean, one great thing, and thank you, Leilani, once again, yay. Part of it is helping me besides my own saying those things, part of my mindset and motivation, because they're kind of intertwined, just like the, the determination and all that different aspects, is, uh, what was I going to say, is hearing from other people, too, realizing and thanking you and thanking you for those those good reviews. It, may, it makes me feel, okay, I, I do know how to do this. So I can do this. I know I've done trainings before. I know I've done all this, but sometimes it's like, can I really do it? Do people really like it? I mean, all the other people that I had, most of them, not all of them, until I started this was all my staff. So, so they, had to, <laughs> they had to participate and they had to be nice. Maybe they felt because I was their boss. So they always said nice things and liked the trainings they said. So it's like, okay, was that really true? So those kind of things. So your mindset and attitude can affect so much and it can become habit forming and you can get depressed and you can get where you, you don't want to do anything or change anything or improve anything. So is your mindset fixed, say in one spot or is it constantly moving, being open to changing your mindset? Are you open to it? Are you like, okay. I do have some of these negative thoughts and I'm sure everyone does sometimes. It's just not letting it feed into everything else. You know, I still do. I mean, I'm in it. I still do. And so, you know, even yesterday, me and my husband had a little tiff, we'll say. We don't usually have those too often, but we did. It was a rough night last night, but I made it through and I had it hard because I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do this young star thing. I'm not going to do it. And before I started this mindset thing and Moda and not saying, you know, these good things, I can do it. This morning I started saying, I can do it. I got up. I can do this. I can go to work. I can get my things done. I can do it. I, you know, and soon I was doing the Young Star email, making sure everyone knew about it and working on it and emailing a couple people and things like that in between doing my intro training. And so Yes, yay, I can do it. So I got over it quicker now. And, and it takes time. You just got to make sure that you keep moving forward and you 
change your mindset. So I can do this. I do got it covered. I, you know, I may not know everything 100% about Youngster, but I know me. I can research it all. And I have a lot of contacts on LinkedIn now. And a lot of different ones are Youngster people. And I can call on them. You know, I mean, I've done the curriculum. I've done my own Wemos trainings. I've done, well, not the Wemos trainings. I went to the Wemos trainings and I have the curriculum based on it and did that. So I have that information, things like that, and that experience. So I can bring that all to the table. So it's like, yes, I can do this. You know, and sometimes it's like, wow, okay. Being, you know, and what things I don't know, as I said, I, I mean, I can learn and figure it out. We can work it together and being able to improve your mindset. So that's a big thing. And that's where I'm at. Thank goodness. Yay. So being able to improve your mindset and saying those positive things about yourself and you can do this and you do got it. And it may take you longer. You may get to have some setbacks, you know, and you may have to reevaluate and change how things are. Yes, that does happen. And yes, it will happen probably until forever, right? You know, because we're, you know, as long as we keep learning and this is all new for you, you've done this before a little bit, Leilani. Now it's in Wisconsin, so it's a little bit different. And you got to remember to use those, learn those different terminologies and things like that and realize, you know, a lot of it, you know, it's just a matter of figuring out the different terminology. And the Wemos, I'm sure, is developmentally appropriate. I'm sure that you understand it and we'll get to it and it won't be that difficult for you. I don't know if you had to do portfolios before or not. Another big thing in the assessments. And you'll have to take an assessment training. I can't help with that, but I can give you some of the resources, resources and help you with it because I've done assessments. I have a degree in early childhood special needs as well. And things like that. But according to the youngster, you have to have an approved trainer for that assessment that you choose that's based on Wemos and based on your curriculum, things like that. And the creative curriculum is something to look into, like that. And just so you know, the creative curriculum is based on the Wemos, is really good. And they even have lesson planning and things. I'm not sure. Danielle Hendricks, one of the directors, uses the creative curriculum. So that's one recommendation. I'm going to talk about that when it comes time to it. So where are you and what do you need to work on? Hmm, we've heard that before. <laughs> so that's it. Let's get your mindset back. How often are you thinking negative thoughts? How often do you doubt yourself? I've done that before and I still do sometimes. But I'm like, no, I got this covered. I can do it. Now think of a favorite place. And what is your favorite place? It's just a little strategy. You can think to yourself, you know, all those, you know, breathe in and out the meditation, breathe in the good, as they say, and breathe out that negativity and the doubt and that all those negative thoughts. Now breathe in again, those positive thoughts, those good things, that knowledge, that experience, you know, and you've done before and you can do this. So, and what I like to do is I think of my favorite place, which is Ireland. I love Ireland. Or just a favorite place with my family, like Christmas and Thanksgiving. I love family time as well. So whatever your favorite place is, and it can be different. You can change it, you know, depending on your mood and what kind of thing you're thinking about. And what is that favorite place? So put that down. Just kind of what is it? You know, do you have any negative thoughts? And how you, what things are you going to replace those negative thoughts with? So now think, ha, 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 we're getting there, right? Now think of some affirmations. That's what they're called, affirmations. You know, I will embrace challenge as opportunities to grow and learn. So that's something. You're making a negative into a positive. You're going to take all of this and different things and make it a positive for yourself that you can do it and you can take challenges. What in your life can you do or have done in the past with different challenges in your life? Even you, Leland, just recently with the family daycare. Now, guess what you're doing? You're doing a group, yay. So that's awesome. So you have that affirmation that you can use that I can do this and I can move forward and I got this. 
It may not be exactly as where you came from, but you do have it and you can go forward. So that kind of affirmation. And you, you know, depending on where you're at, you may need it a little bit more or less. And when you have a really bad day, different things, you know, use that. Take a few minutes out of your day. Take five minutes and do this. Maybe in that really bad spot, like, okay, and realizing you're really negative. Okay, stop and breathe. I mean, that's one simple thing, and but it works. Just breathe in and out and breathe in and out. Positive, breathe in the positive, breathe out the negative. And keep on going back and forth and thinking about those times. These are the motivational times. Maybe not a favorite spot, but maybe a specific time that, okay, it worked out and you, you got the, you found out that, Leilani, that you are able to do a group center and you found this new place and it's all coming together. That could be a great affirmation for you. And I'm sure you have plenty others. We all have some kind of motivation and that can lead into, guess what, motivation. And you got this far, right? So you can keep going and you got this and you can do this. Knowing that you need to change, knowing that you have to move forward, knowing if you've been stuck in the, you know, in the two list for so long, let's kind of, let's motivate you to move forward. Let's motivate you to get there to the three stars. You know, money will, we all need it. So part of the motivation could be money, can be that actual extrinsic thing, your family or friends. How will this affect your family or friends? Things like that. And just the overall mood. Status of the position could be part of it. The children, of course, child care families, helping other child care families to have great places to come and participate in for their day-to-day -day activities that you would that you would do. Part of a whole center, neighborhood and community, being part of that whole, that's great. I mean, that's one thing I love about my job now, being a part of the whole and helping all kinds of different directors and teachers doing better for their own classrooms, learning about compassion, learning to do lab books, learning to do art, all those different things and helping them to learn about open-ended education and open-ended kind of activities and learning to bring it all together and helping them to let children be more cur curious and inquisitive and things like that, and learning how to, what kind of questions to ask the children so that they're more open-ended and not just, oh, that's a great, oh, I really like how you mix those two blue and yellow together. What color did you think that made? How did that look? All those different things. Being a better child care director and to improve personally and within your own business. So having your own business be a, for you, Leilani, but others too. And you can use this as being a director for someone else to maybe motivate you and to open up your own. So you can move into a family or your own group, learning to take those different steps as that's what you want to do to improve personally and within your own business and become a leader in childcare and advocate. I should put that down because that's one thing in the director circle we'll be talking about in a week and a day. <laughs> is the director circle. So we're going to be talking about advocacy and it's kind of hard to get in there, right? I mean, we have so much as directors to do, but we can do advocacy just within our child care center, talking to the parents and giving them insight in what to do and who to call to help with child care and to get the money and finances, help them to learn to be better parents and give them some different activities to do with their children at home. We have all those different things that we can do that's child advocacy. So do you have the motivation? It's one of the crucial elements in attaining our goals, and it is. Along with mindset, it's motivation. That's such an important thing to do and to have is that motivation. So what is your motivation? Is it to help other people and these families, the children? What brought you into the child care field to begin with? And then what made you stay? What made you to move on to become a director, owner, group, or family, or whatever it is you're doing to get from two to three? So let's get there and do it and get that motivation going for yourself. 
It's one of the crucial elements in attaining our goals. And we often have multiple motives for engaging in any behavior. So it's not just one. I mean, part of it is, yes, you'll get to have a little bit more money through the government and the supplemental income that way. You get to have some great micro grants from Young Star. You can get teach and teach and awards benefits as well. Teach to help you get different education. You can do the awards program and get um, a yearly bonus, different things, depending on your level and things. We talk about those resources that you can have. So the financial could be a, a big motivator, obviously. But we want to, you know, those more intrinsic. And we are, because we are child care teachers, and we are very much caring individuals and want to improve children and their families and hopefully then our neighborhood and communities, as I said in the beginning. Motivation might be extrinsic, whereby a person is inspired by outside forces, which is what? Mainly financial. There can be some other things, other people or rewards. Motivation can be intrinsic. And part of my discipline class, extrinsic and intrinsic motivation for children as well, whereby the inspiration comes from within. And that's what we aspire for and desire and should hopefully have. I think in general, most child care professionals have that intrinsic motivation. So motivation is the driving force behind the energy required to complete a task. A lack of motivation will give rise to a lack of drive, power behind completing the task. So that's where also comes, can also come what? Depression, things like that. So you need to have that motivation and mindset and they can play on each other. You can talk about different things, you know, with your mindset, what did you do? With that, with the motivation, what the past goals and things that you completed, that'll give you that motivation. So it's kind of a secular between them. But you need both of them. Lack of motivation, doing the uh, doing things to get something. So just that basic extrinsic. It's a good starting point. There's nothing wrong with that. We all need extra money and different things and physical things and different things like that. There's no problem with that, but we need to get those personal satisfactions and intrinsic kind of things that we need to, to move towards and for. And that will definitely help us be more motivated and have a better mindset. So where are you once again, and what do you need to work on kind of things? Whereas your motivation, do you have some things to motivate you? and continue that mindset. And then they can, you can say what you had to motivate you. Just like doing, as I talk about the goals, those daily tasks, reviewing your day. Yeah, some days you may not get to all of them, but guess what? When you do or get to most of them and you accomplish that and start reviewing your day and figuring out what you need to move and change on, guess what? That's motivation for you right there because you are completing some tasks. And you're working towards his goals. So that is self-motivating. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to be self-motivating and help with your mindset. So they're very intertwined. So are you in a rut? And we have those sometimes, especially if you've been in two star for so long, you figured, oh, I can't get out. Well, how can I do it? Well, we talk about some helpful things with the goals and time management. And, you know, getting out rid of those bad habits, kinds of things like that. And that's all part of your daily planning, those tasks, all that all kind of plays together to get you out of that rut and help you get a better mindset and motivation to move forward and climb your way up and out. Yay. See, you can do it. So and get that motivation and mindset. And there you are. Yay. You can do it. Definitely. So start over, start afraid, start again, start late, just start. So always start, even when we fall down. And guess what? Those fall downs will be easier and easier to get back up from because you'll have that mindset. You'll have those affirmations. You'll have that motivation and realize that you can do it. So there you go. Yay. Second one done. I don't know what time is it. Oh, there we go. I'm checking on 
my Facebook Live. No one's there, I guess. I don't know if they came and gone. What was I going to do? I forgot. There's something I was going to do with that. I'm not sure. Anyways, no big deal. Anyways, oh, I know. I was going to check the time. I don't know what time it is. 6.30. Okay. Yep, it's 6.30 now. Yay, wow. I went that long. Well, it's not that. It's supposed to be an hour and a half. So we got a little bit more to go, but we'll probably end a little bit early that way. Because the last bit is fairly easy and straightforward. But at this point, any questions, any thoughts, any comments? Um, no. So is the PDF that you have, is this like um do you sell the forms or is just your, your PowerPoint? Well, this is just a Word document. I won't sell it and have them for free. Because if you want the two hours it is for this training on the registry, uh -huh. you need to do the homework. That's with that. All those questions I ask? Yes. Saying and circling yes or no. Yes. Put in there maybe or a little bit okay. <laughs> for those questions. And then you send it back. You can keep okay. them for yourself, obviously, if you want to okay. keep them. You can have, I'll send them to you, all three of them. But okay, perfect. Definitely. But they're just Word documents. So you can change them fairly easily. So you just do a save as and do homework or however you want to do it. And okay. It back. Okay. That way. Okay. Two, I have like two people. That's including me. I forget. Okay. Share the last one. Last but not least, part three. And this will be a little bit easier one. Or quicker, I should say, not necessarily easier. I don't think I have too much questions in here. It's putting it all together in one. So putting it all together, the support, knowledge, experience, and accountability from me to making sure you're accountable for your goals and your tasks. And we'll talk about that all the time, helping you with determination and getting you there and your mindset, getting some affirmations there if you need it, some more, you know, and then with that, the motivation. So who can benefit from the program? Child care directors, family, and center group that are in Wisconsin. Now, centers that aren't in Wisconsin can benefit because all this will help improve your child care center, but it's mainly for in Wisconsin because that's our system that we use. And not all different, some different states do use it, but I don't think Michigan or Illinois do that I actually am also a trainer for. I'm working towards Illinois, I should say that. I am Michigan already, the state of Michigan. But Illinois, I'm waiting on them to get back to me. So the program is one-year program. I figured, because we're going to do some reviewing, and there's a section of additional points, so we can look at those kind of things. And I think I put in there three, three, well, we can look through it. I forget exactly. I think three, as I said, for the the biggest one, the curriculum and portfolios and all that. So there's going to be a Facebook private group for the Youngster programs. And then the Youngster training program is 3.5 hours of tier training monthly. So that's an hour and a half, excuse me, of the training that I will go through and give you some information and discussion points on different things. See where you're at with your homework. Talk about what's you need to work on kind of thing. So, you know, all the different things that you need to do with the young star for the, that section we're working on and what you can work on. Everyone might be working on different things. And then also reviewing it, see where you're at, what points do you have and what do you need to work on? Making sure that you keep those points and don't, you know, sidetrack working on something else. That's sometimes what happens, but we gotta, you know, keep going. And that's why I will, you know, ask, see how your homework's doing with your classes and things like that. How are you doing with portfolios? Did you start them or different things like that? So you'll have that homework to do and hand in. You have the Q&A as part of that homework time. You can do it at any time. It will be recorded as well. Then what you will do with that, it'll help you answer if you have any questions or challenges that you're facing or even help with your mindset and motivation and get you going again. So that'll be like within two weeks, roughly after your our Youngstar training for that month. And then it will have the Q&A session 
We should have coach, coaching and kind of things and question and answer. And in the private youngster group, we'll have a Q&A host. So you can ask those questions. I'll answer them right away sometimes, or I'll wait for the to do it during the Q&A session. So if you can't make it, you can then do the recording for that, and that's completely fine. Then you can use that, and I will answer the questions during then if I haven't answered them on the actual uh, link that I have or post. That's it, the post. I forgot what that was called. <laughs> the actual post with a Q and A questions for the for that month and or challenges you're having or different things, whatever. And then you can come to the obviously come to the Q and A would be best, more interactive. But you can do it either way. And then additional bonus throughout the program, like I may have different trainings, like the goal training that I think would be great for some of you to do, things like that. So I'll have different trainings. I'll hopefully have, hopefully, uh, some of my contacts from Young Start to come in for a Q&A and or the training, depending on their hours and what they can do for certain things. So we'll have different guest speakers, hopefully a couple of times. And you'll definitely have some different bonus trainings. So you'll should probably by the end of this training with the 3.5 hours monthly, hopefully be able to make it to all of them. And with the bonus trainings that I give, you should be able to get all 25 hours for a group. And I do believe it's still 15, though they updated it. I just found out from Leilani that they have updated it again. So hopefully I don't think that changed, but I will make sure and with both of those, you should be able to get enough points, or enough points, enough hours, excuse me. Hopefully enough points with Youngster, right? <laughs> but enough uh, hours so you don't have to worry about anything else except for this program. You know, I mean, not that you don't have to worry for your childcare, but for your training hours, you won't have to. The most likely you'll be, depending where you're at education-wise, you'll be having all those hours. But they go over to a two years. Now, if they keep that the same, it's two years. So you have those two, two years for that those training hours. So if you get over, you have, then for next year, you can use those hours too. So then, you know, you can maybe come down the year after or something or wait a year to do something else. I mean, like me, you just keep doing your trainings and it won't matter. But that's how that works. So can you do this? Yes, because guess what? You're here, you're a director. You already have some determination, you have some mindset, you have some of all this most likely in you already. And you most likely have intrinsic motivation already within you. You probably have so much within you already and you might just been in a rut for a while or just some things or just need the help to get there. Different things like that. You want that extra help to get to that three stars. So there you go. So otherwise you wouldn't be a child care director or owner. As I said, so what's holding you back? So what's holding you back? Do you lack the determination? Do you need to improve your mindset? Do you lack the motivation? Or do you need more support? And that's what I'm here for too, the support. So my, my knowledge and experience. And just kicking your butt, making sure you're getting it done and keeping it done, as well as keeping you motivated and to improve your mindset. Sometimes we all need that. Now, probably in each training, I'll do a little bit mindset and or motivation kind of things to help us, you know, continue if we're in a rut and you're having a lot of challenges with your staff or different things like that. Who knows? All those different things that come up in life. I mean, it might be some personal stuff that you're not getting to all those goals because you have your mind is not fully there. And that happens sometimes. We just got to make sure we can move through it and move forward. So what you need, some different skills. You can learn those. Education, you can get this. The mindset, you can improve this. So if you're on the more negative side, let's keep moving you forward to that positive side. Same with motivation. Are you having any motivation? Let's keep moving you forward. Start you know, reminding yourself, you got this far in life. You got to be a director, okay? You know, you might be in a rut, but you can do it. You can keep moving forward. You got a lot of skills. They got a lot of knowledge, different things like that. So keep moving yourself forward. And support, that's me with helping you with all the different things. That's what this program is all about, is a support. 
That's the main thing, what it is. And there I am helping. No, it's not really me. Ha ha ha. As you all know. And you can see me. Ha. Ah. <laughs> the program will, Youngstar Goals and Points, will give you Youngstar Goals and Points, knowledge, provide support, keep your mindset strong, your motivation strong, accountability, keep you moving forward and work with your strengths and learning. Sometimes, you know, those different things that um, ha you have limitations with sometimes. And we all do. We all have different limitations. So realizing that and figuring out a way to work with it so you can keep moving forward. Weaknesses, flip it and work with it and rise to life's challenges. Every step of the way, every type, every point or part of your life from you know, adolescence and being a young adult and the career path you choose, all those different things, there's different challenges through it all, no matter where you are. And my most difficult one was entering empty nesting. But that's where it got me to here and starting my own business. So it's exciting. So I'm moving forward with it and getting a better mindset and motivation about it all. So I'm excited. And I'm excited about this program. Yay. Let's get moving forward with your determination and the right mindset and motivation. Can't say it enough. Let's set and achieve our young star goals. And that's what we're going to work on. Young star goals. Young star training at a glance. So first session will be in September. Now I'm going to do once I get enough people signed up. So hopefully by mid-August, late August, then I'm going to have some different a different time for it, or I, I should say a different time. We're going to put out the times for it. Blah. Talking so much right now. I'm not used to just talking, talking, talking. I love the interactions. Like my trainings are a little bit more interactive usually. So anyways, we're going to, I'm going to put out a survey, best day and time for it. So we already have the Mondays taken for my other things as well as the Q&A. So we've got to figure out Tuesdays or Thursdays and the best time, hopefully for everyone to the best that way. So educational qualifications. Uh, so that's our first session, Youngster points and your goals. So most of it's always the same, your schedule, tasks, moving forward, mindset, motivation. We're going to do one or both. And dedication. Keep your dedication there, where and what classes to take. So we're going to talk about the different classes and just some my um, advice of what to take and different things like that, just to keep you moving forward. And then some resources too. Oh, I must have taken out. And resources as well, like the rewards and the Young Star micro grants and the training, uh, not training, the uh, teach, that's it, the teach, that kind of thing. And then just doing your own financial aid program, you can do too. Depending on where you're at with that, you can do financial aid. And you can supplement with just financial aid. You need not to take it all. So you can do that. The second through four sessions, October to January. Seems like a long time, but it's not really. For the learning environments and curriculum with, and all within that is the WEMOS the curriculum as well as room arrangement and all those different things as well as uh portfolios so getting those observations and taking pictures and writing notes and the assessment all that's part of that learning environment curriculum so and figuring out the young step points and goals and your mindset so curriculum portfolios observation assessments so i think i have one per month and I will be taking, and along with you all too, a December break. I think I still will do a Q&A session that month. So to help you to stay motivated, maybe to help you to continue, things like that, get to get caught up if you need to, all those different things and figuring it out. So I'm pretty sure I'll still do the Q&A. I just won't do the regular training session. Kind of give you a little breather in there. Give me a little breather and have some fun holiday stuff going on. So the fifth to sixth month is February to March. It'll be the business professional practices. It'll be a little bit more for group because it talks about the staff and the resources you need for all that, different things like that. 
And then the same youngster points mindset, business and plan and reevaluation. And this is a will be a great one to kind of reevaluate. That's why I did it now to reevaluate where you are with everything. It didn't seem like we did a lot, but it is a lot, especially in that curriculum, as I said. So to reevaluate where you are, what you're doing, along with your professional practices. So it'll be kind of all that together at that point. And we have two sessions, I do believe, for that. And this is kind of estimated thoughts. So we have to see. And depending if we need to do a second year for some people or just in general, I'm willing to do that. And it'll be discounted if you do it through because some of this is going to be hard. Your education is going to take a while. It's not a choice, pretty much. You have the semesters you have to do. So that's going to be take you some time. The portfolios and curriculum, that may take you a while. Some professional goals and things that might. So I'm going to see. I think a year will be good to get you to where you need to be, hopefully. And at least you'll know all the goals and all that. And some of it, then at that point, you hopefully will your mindset and your motivation and all of the determination will be good. And so you can maybe do it on your own and just come in and join my regular membership. And anyone can join the Q&A question for Youngstar. It will be specifically for the Youngstar program. And it will be specifically to start with all the Q&As for your answers and for you in the program. And then if I have extra time, I will answer other questions and or get back to them if I don't know the exact answer, things like that. So it'll be mainly for you, for the Youngstar question and answer. So you can always come and join that with a regular membership. And just do that portion the second year. And depending where everyone's at, then I find out the end if everyone's ready and willing and wanting to go on to the fourth, the um, for four stars, then I will do a program for three to four stars and getting you there. So we'll just see how that plays out. So this is my first year doing this. So seventh to eight month sessions are on health and wellness. And that's a little bit easier one, but we need to, you know, the food program, you know, all that diversity can be in there. We haven't really talked much about diversity, but it is in the curriculum and all those things. It needs to be in there. So health and wellness. And also hopefully for your staff as well to making sure that they're, you know, healthy and keeping up and don't call in sick all the time or different things like that. Their health and wellness and their motivation and their mindset. So you have to set that standard and have a good role, be a good role model for that. And then spring break, yay, May, which is my anniversary month. So it'll be similar to December. I'll probably do the Q&A. <laughs> but we'll have May to catch up and take a breather, whatever you need to do. Have some fun yourself doing the spring, spring thing. Uh, May 19th, if anyone's curious, is my anniversary. But we always do something that weekend, usually before or after, depending on when it falls. I don't know this year. But last year was on a Sunday, though, so it should be on a Monday yet. But anyways, so we'll skip a Monday, that one. Anyways, yay. So we'll have a spring break and play catch up if you need or whatever. And then the ninth and 10th sessions is extra points. Yay. And they have a thing, all the different extra points. So I thought that's cool. We can do that. Play catch up again. See where we're at. You know, we have to keep making sure that we look back at where we're at. You know, how's your homework going? Do you need to? And if I don't have that many people, I just thought of this in my homework session for my trainings. Come on, join that one. And you can ask questions and I can give help as much as I can for your homework. Things like that. So we can work on your homework from your different trainings that you're taking or classes to help you with that if you need it. Any pointers or what to do. So mindset, motivation, and dedication as always. And then the monthly Q&A as always. And then we're ready, set to go. That's, that's it. So we have the extra points for that. And that's where we end. Yay. Oops, stop. Training. There we go. Yay. And what time is it? What time is it? I gotta see how I how I plan it because sometimes I wonder. 49.
Oh, I did pretty good because I didn't even yes, you did. any questions or anything. So, <laughs> or not too much, a little bit of break in there for you. Yeah. yeah, a couple more people. And I was hoping to have a couple more people, but that's okay. I have fun with Eli Lana anyway. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Me as well. Yay. So do you have any more questions about the whole program and how it's going to all work out? Um, no, but I know if I do, you're the great person to come to. <laughs> Yay. You have all definitely. the answers. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to meet up again in, uh, after the 18th of August, then yeah. Yeah. or whatever, we'll figure it out. I have to look at my calendar. Usually Tuesdays and Thursdays are the better days or even Friday, a Friday. Lots is not payroll Friday. Okay. Good job. Other than that, August 18th. Wow, it's going to be quick. It's only two weeks away. Yeah. Two weeks it's away. Good. I know you're happy about that. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I'm not. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> only two weeks away. That's how I'm feeling. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. We have two so, weeks. Yeah. So hopefully by the 18th or 19th, I'll have a survey out for everyone that wants to do the Youngster program. Okay. And then pick a, a different day of the week for the actual training session. So Monday okay. stay probably on Mondays for the Q&A. So do you think that um, we should maybe change the times um, or maybe the day so that it could be for everyone so you can get more people to come on? <laughs> What do you mean? What I, I'm confused. I mean, I know like today, um, like you know, like we have today. You know, I know you're supposed to have a lot of people. We're not but, a lot. I was having like five people. Okay, so maybe it's probably like the time or something. Oh, but yeah, we can check different times. No one ever said different times, so we can. I mean, do you think of a better time? I mean, I do have one. The nineteenth, which is late at seven p.m. Okay. So that's probably more. You probably I'm, I only say that because I know like sometimes 4 35 30, I know like directors kids are leaving, you know, getting ready to go home, they're closing in their centers, so they're more still at work. So they right. can't really get on how you know. I know because I thought about doing nap time ish, like 1 p.m. ish. Then okay. sometimes get busy there too. Yeah, it definitely does because they have to catch up with things, paperwork, attendance, and lunch forms. Yeah, or yeah. especially if there's something going on at the center or do, you know, right. do lunch or something that day. Right. All those different things. So maybe I should just do it more like at 7 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be better to get so everyone will be able to um, retain the information that you're giving. Okay, so maybe 7 p.m. That's a great idea. So I can do 7 p.m. for the next. Well, I have one tomorrow, which I think I'm going to cancel, but then I have the 19th. And maybe I'll change that to next week. Okay. See where everyone's at for the 7 p.m. and do a 7 p.m. and see if that works better. Right. And that way, and then that fun week on the 18th, 19th, I can put out the survey so we can get going on it by September, hopefully. Right. Okay, I like that. So I'll do 7 p.m. on uh, next week, Wednesday or Thursday. Any day of the week or for you personally or in general, do you think? Um, any day of the week is fine. Um, I think we should take a poll. So oh, we yeah. what day um, is good for everyone. So 7 p.m. Because I can do any day. Well, not Monday is not because I'm going to be doing that. And I can change that to a later time too. Okay. Put it to 6 p.m. I was going to do. Okay. Right. So even 6.30 or 7. Okay. That's fine. Just, you know, do that. I can't do, well, I can do Thursday, so it would be, I have to alternate with the director circle okay. with that, because I have a director circle once a month. Okay. So I can um, do Thursday, that we'll just have to alternate. Month? I'm sorry, what? Is that this month? Yeah. Well, it's every month. It's once a month. It's next Thursday, though. It's not this Thursday. It's not tomorrow. It's the following week. It's a that one right now I have, and I can change it, is the second Thursday of the month. So I can do this a first next Thursday week. of the month for this if I wanted to. Okay. And I could do um, the first Thursday of the month, and then we can do the Q&A session. I didn't pick which one, but I could do it like the third or fourth session. Well, I could do the third session of the month for Mondays. For okay. 
Q&A. So then you have two weeks in between. Right. Okay. Well, that's fine. And that way you have some time to think about it, you know, work work on some things and you'll have some questions. Right. What you're working on, hopefully, depending on where you're at with your points and things like that. So I could do the first Thursday of the month. And then Mondays for the Q&A, we can do Q&A um, the third. We don't want to do the fourth because that'd be too close to do this. We could do the second or third. Third pie would be better of the month for the Q&A because that should be at least a week and a half in between to two weeks, depending either way. And then that would could be the first one. Um, the first one of the month, first month, uh, Thursday of the month, we can do. Unless I want a different day, that's fine too. It doesn't matter. So we can do the third Monday, and then we can do the first one of whatever day of the week is best. Okay. okay. It's Tuesday through Thursday. I figured now Fridays and Mondays we can't. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. We can pick that way. So I'll have a story for that. And then check time, 7 p.m. I don't want to do too much later than 7. Right. I think 7 would be like ideal. So hopefully they're home. They had a little bit of right. if not dinner all together. <laughs> Things like that. So if you want the two hours of the training, you need to hand in. And I'll send you, when I get off here, I'll send you all the, all the three word, the word documents. So then just answer the questions whenever you get a chance. And then I can, I'll put you on the registry and give you those hours. Okay, perfect. For that. So I'll do that. And then you have all the information. If you think of any other questions or whatnot, then you can email me as you know. Okay, perfect. Yay. Yes. And good luck, good luck again. Thanks again. Um, I will talk. I'll email you. Um, you can email me. I'll I'll email you back once you send me the um homework. Oh yeah, and then you can email questions or comments or what you want to talk about or when you want to meet if you know already. Because if you know it's going to be that day, we can already just plan like the day after or something. I don't know what what day is that. You is it the this eighteenth? Um, the 18th, I believe that's a, it's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Yeah. It's a Wednesday. So then Thursday, oh, let me start recording this.